Hey folks, Chris Theroux from Seedleaf here, and today I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the Seedleaf platform on our beta version to give you a sense of how it works and how it can work for you. Let's start at the beginning with crops. Seedleaf comes preloaded with about 45 different crops, and I've done some modifications to the crops here to make them work for me. The seeding rates, days to maturity, and cut yield are for my system, and then I've customized the name. I have uh, my trays all with uh, a 1020 cut modifier for the ones that are going to be cut and are in a 1020 tray. And you can see here in the sunflower, I have a bunch of options where I have both live and cut trays of different sizes. So crops are really customizable for you, so you can easily account for all the different uh, crop types that you've got. Now, we grow a crop, but we sell a product. So let's move on to products here. Now, I've created a number of products based on my crops. Pea shoots, I've got pea shoots live trays, I've got radish shoots. These are very, very simple to create and there's a lot of flexibility here as well. Seed leaf also gives you the option of doing mixes. So here's my spicy mix that has 50% sunflower, 25% arugula and 25% daikon. And here's the different sizes I offer. A small size at 100 grams, medium at 200 grams, and a large at 350 grams. So there's a lot of flexibility in your sizing and your pricing and your crop mixes. Once we have crops and products finished, we can start thinking about customers. Now I've loaded this up with some very real sounding customers, but the idea is to give you a sense of a customer range you might have. So here we've got a few cafes, a restaurant, a couple of grocers, and a farmer's market. So this might give you a sense of the kind of customers you might have in here. Customer information is very simple, and all you really need is the customer's name and the customer type. Okay, so you've got some crops. From those crops, you're able to make products. And because you have products, you can now start attracting customers to make sales. In order to make sales, we need an order. So let's take a look at orders. Here's the orders I've put in here already, and I'm just going to take a look at an order here to give you a sense of how they work. For each order, you're going to put in a customer name, the first harvest date, and how often they're going to receive the order. You can do weekly, bi-weekly, or one time. And the end date automatically sets for the end of that year, but you can set that to whatever you want. So here, this one's done. We've got a live tray of sunflower here and some pea shoots here. Uh, our price and quantity is in there and the price is, uh, the price autofills, but you can change that if you want. So it's a very, very simple, quick process to put in uh, your orders. When you go to change an order, you have the option of changing just the current order you're working with or this and the following orders. This is a concept you might be very familiar with using Google calendars. I didn't make any changes, so I'm gonna leave that as is. So you can see my orders are all here. I've got all these orders for a Tuesday harvest, and then I've got some orders for a Friday harvest, and they continue every week until the end of the year because these are all recurring orders in my books. Well, one of the major things that Seedleaf does is generates your crop production tasks. When you go to tasks, it'll always choose the day you were on, but we're gonna skip ahead because we set our first, uh, our first harvest date for November 9th. So when we go to November 1st, we can see we've got some soaking and sowing uh, tasks here to do. And what this does is ensures your soaking and sowing crops on the proper day for your crop to mature on your harvest day. It gives you the sowing rate, your soak time, and the number of trays you need to soak. In the case of some crops like the peas, the peas have an overnight soak. So you'll notice we're soaking them here today, but we're not sowing them. We're actually sowing them the next day. Here's our speckled pea uh, cut and live here because we're soaking that crop overnight and we're sowing it the next day with a bunch of crops here. So a little complex, but actually very simple. The tasks we have are soaking, sowing, uncovering, harvesting, which gives you a breakdown of the trays you're harvesting and packaging. So let's pick our harvest date and take a look at what that looks like. So here we've got some soaking and sowing to do on our harvest date and some uncovering, but here's our harvest. There's a breakdown here of all the trays I'll be cutting, how many trays of each and what my total expected yield is. Below that is what I'm packaging. So for example, I need to package eight small radish shoots or for my spicy mix, I'm packing eight small spicy mix and one large spicy mix. For my trays, my 1020 trays here, you can see I'm not packaging, I'm selling them as live trays and they are summarized there. So this gives you a good sense of what your packaging is going to look like with each harvest. 
Now, what all of this ends up generating is good financial and revenue data for yourself. So let's choose that first harvest day again, which was November 9th, and that's going to be our start and end date. So we can just look at that day. So when we open just that day, we can see our sales summarized here. And this is a bit of a unique format, but as you'll see, it makes a bit of sense. The thing that is unique about it is that our totals are at the top of our table and not the bottom. And our totals are broken down, you can see here, by crop and value, and then by sizes here for that crop, and then by customer here. So Bob's Grocery, I can scroll along and see, okay, for that harvest day, well, the only thing I have for him are uh, wheatgrass trays, about $75 worth. So this is broken down for all your customers. So our sales for this day, this harvest day, are $438. Let's take a look at the uh, Friday harvest there, which is a bigger harvest, and the value is about $1,300. And it's broken down by crop and by customer as well. So you can see that we can, we can really quickly get a sense of all the different metrics we can collect. And then if we want, we can look at our sales for the week by looking at both of those. So the way this one is set up, we've done about $1,800 in sales that week. So this is a very, very quick look at Seedleaf and how it works. Uh, many more features are planned for the future, but this gets you off to a good start. And the goal here is to give you the tools you need to make sure you're sowing enough crop to meet your needs, but not so much that it's going to waste. And Seedleaf does that very well. Our scheduled release date for Seedleaf is the end of November, so keep an eye on this space to find out when it's officially released. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter, check out the link in our bio, and from there you can also take a look at some other resources we have. Uh, for those of you who sign up for the newsletter, uh, we will be giving generous discounts for initial releases, so keep an eye on this space.